What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. This is another highly requested video based on previous videos and we are gonna be discussing metric conversions and how to do them. Let's get started. So to begin, let's take a look at our metric conversion table. We have kilo, hecto, deca, unit, deci, centi, and milli. Now this is a lot. And the easiest way that I remember it is King Henry doesn't usually drink cold milk. And that kind of helps me set up my table whenever I'm doing metric conversion equations. So when it comes to the kilo, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 units. So you're going to see kilometer, kiloliter, and kilogram. That's everything under the kilo column. Let's move on to hecto. So one hecto or hector is equal to 100 units. And you're either going to have a hectometer, a hectoliter, or a hectogram. When it comes to deca, you can have um, one deca is equal to 10 units. So you could have a decameter, a decaliter, or a decagram. And then we move on to our units. So this is what everything is based off of, right? This is the units of our metric conversion table. So when it comes to meters, that's helping us me measure length. When it comes to liter, it's helping us measure volume. And when it comes to gram, it's helping us measure weight. So you've got M for meter, L for liter, and, and G for gram. Moving on to the other side of our units, and that's going to be our deci, centi, and milli. So when it comes to centi, one unit is equal to 10 deci. So we've got decimeter, deciliter, and deca, I'm sorry, decigram. Moving on to centi, one unit is equal to 100 centi. So we've got centimeter, centiliter, and centigram. And then lastly, we've got our milli. So one unit is equal to a thousand milli. So we've got millimeter, milliliter, and milligram. So I know this seems really confusing, but stick with me. Let's do some equation of how we convert based on the metric table. So let's begin with our first equation. It is asking us to convert 1000 milliliters to liters. So as we know, liters is our unit of measurement, right? So we're going to be taking milliliters and we're going to be going this way with our equation. So how do we do this? Well, we start by taking the last number in our equation and putting it in to the milliliter spot and then moving to the left. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1. In our decimal place, it's always going to sit at the end of our equation, right? So it's going to be on the right hand side of milliliters. That is going to be true as we move the decimal place down to the units. It's going to sit at the right hand side of our unit. So we're going to move it over one, two, three. It's now sitting at the right hand side of our unit. So we know that 1000 milliliters is equal to one liter. Because everything on the right hand side of the decimal just kind of goes away and we're just left with our whole number of one. Let's move on to the next equation. So the next equation is asking us to convert 350 millimeters to meters. And again, meters is our unit of measure. So we're starting down here at the millimeters again. We've got our decimal point here and we're going to start plugging in our numbers. So we've got zero, five, and three. So we need to move that decimal place to the right hand side of our units column. So we're going to move it over one, two, three. We are now on the right hand side of our units column. So like we said before, that zero just kind of goes away. But now we don't have a whole number sitting in this unit area right here, right? So in order for us to do that, we are going to add zero. So we know that 300 and 50 millimeters is equal to 0 0.35 meters. Let's move on to our next question. So for the last couple of questions, we've been moving from the right to the left. In this question, we're going to be moving from the left to the right. So let's take a look at how that differs. So again, it's asking us to convert 10 
kilograms to grams. And we know that grams is a unit of measure. So we know that we're going to end over here on the units column. So to begin, we're gonna place our decimal place to the right of where we're starting, right? So we've got 10. So everything's just going to sit here in the kilograms column and we're going to move our decimal place over to the right hand side of our units. So that's gonna be one, two, three. Well, we've got nothing in between there, so we need to start adding our zero. So we're gonna add a zero in the hecta, the deca, and the units. So based on the conversion that we just did, we know that 10 kilograms is going to equal 10,000 grams. So as long as you write this table out and you're doing these conversions based on this table, it's going to be very easy for you to figure out these dosage calculation exams with this particular setup. Let's move on to another question. So our next question is asking us to convert 10 decagrams to milligrams. So this is our first equation where we're not using this unit of measure column as our ending point. So we know that based on this equation, our ending point is gonna be over here in the milligrams section. So we're gonna start by putting our decimal place to the right of our column, so we know that we're starting at decagrams, and we're going to write out our number, and we're going to convert this to milligrams. So this is going to be the ending of our equation. How do we do that? We're gonna add our zeros and move our decimal place over. So zero, 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 moving the decimal place to the point that it needs to be here on the right-hand side of the column, which is what we're converting to. And we know that based on our equation, 10 decagrams is equal to 100,000 milligrams. I know it's getting easier as we move along. Let's look at one last question. So our last question is a little bit tricky. We're having to do a little bit of conversion when it comes to this question. So let's take a look. Which value is greater? 0.5 liters or 400 milliliters? So we begin really easily. We move our decimal point here to the milliliters and we know we have 400 milliliters. Now we need to configure how we're gonna convert that 0.5 liters to milliliters. So we do that the same way that we've been doing this. So we're gonna put our decimal at the end of our liters because we know that we're starting with liters. And we're gonna plug in our zero and our five. So we know that we need to end down here at milliliters. So we're gonna add our zeros and move our decimal and that gives us 500. So now we know we have 400 milliliters versus 500 milliliters. Well, when you're looking at the equation, you're really looking at 400 versus 500, right? Which one is greater? The greater one is that 500 milliliters. So we know that this 0.5 liters is greater than 400 milliliters. I hope that this video was helpful for you in understanding how to do the metric table conversions. If you have any additional questions or if you just wanna run some stuff by me, make sure that you leave your comments down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video. Head over to nursechung.com where there's additional questions and resources around metric conversions. But until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.